Today, we will be dealing with certain elements of communication, basically with regards to the definition of communication and also understanding several characteristics of human communication. So without any further delay, let us enter into today's topic, that is, what is communication, understanding its definition and its characteristics. So in order to do that, we need to understand the term communication. We see that the term communication has a variety of use. At the same time, we see that the term is used in a variety of contexts and also conveys a variety of different meanings. And in this way, if we want to analyze the term communication, if we want to study the term communication and all the aspects related to it, we need to have a narrow definition of communication. Now, when I speak of communication being used in a wide variety of ways, there are several reasons for this. Sometimes we come across something called as perfect communication versus issues in communicating. Let me give you a small example. Let us take an office setup. We see that individuals in that particular office may have a lot of difficulty in communicating or passing a message from one source to another. For example, if the office members do not have perfect harmony in among themselves, it would be very difficult for them to convey information and also to work together on a common project. So that would basically be an example of issues in communicating. When we look at perfect communication, the perfect example for this would be a couple that is in love. And for them, they would say that everything is perfect. They can understand each other well, they can relate to each other well, and they can also understand the gestures and the symbols that each other pass on in the daily life. Having said this, we also come across terms such as office communicating systems. And these are none other than the gadgets that we use in a normal office setup that would include computers, telephones, printers, etc. Basically, anything that can be used in order to convey information or to pass on information from one source to another. Now, we see that of late, there's also been a lot of interest in studying communication among animals. Let me give you a small example. If you are sitting one day idly, not doing anything, you may have noticed ants moving in a line. And if you observe closely, you will see that they tend to communicate with one another. They tend to pass certain signals, certain messages to the entire group or to the colony. At the same time, we also see that different animals communicate in various ways. For example, cats would have various cries, various sounds in order for various behaviors or the various messages that they want to pass. And therefore scientists, I've been able to study and describe communication among ants, dolphins, and other animals. At the same time, we also have something called as communications conglomerates. And these refer to certain organizations that deal with publishing newspapers, books, magazines, or organizations that own radios and television stations. So in simple words, it could mean an organization that holds many different things within itself. For example, a perfect example of that could be an enterprise which has various other branches or organizations working for the same purpose. So having looked at this, we also need to understand that having a general definition of communication is not useful. We need to narrow our focus before proceeding because only when we narrow our focus at that time, we can find a definition that would be useful for our purpose of study. And for this reason, we see that having a precise definition will enable us to understand the crux of the matter and at the same time 
to understand the implications of what we want to study in the philosophy of human communication. Now, basically, let us begin by eliminating. So first of all, we can say that it doesn't deal with communication among animals or the use of computers or other gadgets. That doesn't form the definition of philosophy of human communication. And at the same time, it also doesn't deal with subjects mentioned in the Oxford Dic Dictionary. Now, if you look at the Oxford Dictionary, you will see that there are plenty of meanings, plenty of terms that are given for the whole uh, aspect of communication. You know, based on several situations, several nuances, there are different definitions or meanings that are given. Let us take a look at some of them. Now, when it comes to communication, the Oxford Dictionary says that it refers to the activity or process of expressing ideas and feelings or of giving people information. Let us analyze this statement properly. So first we see that it activity or a process of expressing ideas and feelings. This appears to be quite a general statement. It doesn't give us any concrete aspect or information. And if we basically refer to it as an activity or a process wherein people give information, that also becomes very general and vague. Another definition or another meaning that is given by the Oxford Dictionary is communication refers to the methods of sending information, especially through telephones, radios, com computers, etc. Now, you would also notice that they've also mentioned roll, roads and railroads. Now, we have to also understand that earlier, letters and other messages would be passed on by using certain means of transport, such as roll, roads and railroads. And as a result of it, they too become part of the whole communication process. A message, a letter or a telephone call can also be included under the wide umbrella of the term communication. But all this does not really communicate the precise definition of the term. Basically, we can say that certain definitions are broad and inclusive, whereas others tend to be restrictive. First, we can take a look at a general definition of communication. This says that communication refers to the process that links discontinuous parts of the living world to one another. Now, this is an example of a general definition of communication, which tells us that linking two parts in proper harmony with one another, just as linking two parts of chain to one another. When we come to a restricted definition, this refers to communication as the means of sending messages which is not intended for public use. And the best example would be military messages or military orders that are basically sent. Now, they try to convey information in such a way that the enemy camp doesn't understand or the enemy camp doesn't decode their message. And in this way, we see that here communication is restricted to only a certain particular group in order so that the message can be passed on and the activity being carried out. With regards to activity, we can come to the next sets of definitions. And here we see definition that includes intentionality. Now, intention is a very important aspect of communication because Sometimes we tend to act intentionally. We act with a particular intent or purpose in mind. On the other hand, we tend to do something unconsciously or sometimes it just happens that we tend to do something without being fully aware of it. Now, communication with intent refers to those situations in which the source transmits a message to a receiver with conscious intent to affect the latter's behavior. So when we speak about this, 
A perfect example of this would be if I ask a particular person to get me a glass of water. In this way, I have the intention of making the person get that glass of water. Therefore, I convey the message in such a way that I want the other person to act in a particular manner. And therefore, that becomes communication with intent. Now, there's also something called as communication, which includes goal. Now, we see that some definitions includes a statement of success, effectiveness, or accuracy. At the same time, other definitions do not contain such implicit judgments. Now, the following definition, which we are going to see, presumes that communication is successful that the thought or idea has been successfully engaged. And the definition is, communication is the verbal interchange of a thought or idea. In this way, we see that the goal has been to exchange the thought or idea from one source to another source. And in this way, we see that the medium that is used is the verbal medium. And therefore, the goal has been achieved as the message has been passed from one source to another verbally. At the same time, we also see that these aspects of communication come with other nuances. For example, if we take a look at another definition, doesn't judge whether the outcome is successful or not. And that definition would be communication is a transformation or the transmission of information from one source to the other. Here, the information is transmitted, but it is not necessary whether it is received or understood. And therefore, that becomes a perfect example of communication without a particular goal. Having said this, we now come to a working definition of communication. And this definition we will use for our study and for our research in this field of philosophy of human communication. And the definition is, communication refers to the process of human beings responding to the symbolic behavior of other persons, how people react, how people interact with one another through their symbolic behavior, as well as through other patterns of relating. A broad study of this term will be done in the following chapters. But at the moment, what is necessary for us is to understand the definition and at the same time to understand the characteristics of the definition of human communication. Now it is said that there are three characteristics of communication. First is communication is human, communication is a process and communication is symbolic. We shall now take a look at these three characteristics in a systematic manner. Coming to the first point, communication is human. Here we see that human communication is the field dedicated to understanding how people communicate. And here we see that even animals communicate with one another. So what is so special about human beings communicating? Well, we have seen how ants communicate with the other individuals of the same colony. We have seen how animals such as cats or dogs interact with one another, how they communicate and pass signals to one another. And therefore, we see that the importance of communication in human society has been recognized for thousands of years, far longer than we can demonstrate through recorded history. And as humans, we have the communication abilities that other animals do not have, such as being able to communicate aspects like time and space as though they were solid objects. Now we see that human communication is the field that is dedicated to understanding how people communicate to one another. Probably we would have seen that beehives have bees communicating among themselves. Chimpanzees are also taught how to express themselves with the same sign language that is used 
by deaf humans. And at the same place, we can see that how pet owners also are able to decipher what their pets want to communicate. Now we see that the current study of human communication can be broken down into two major categories, rhetorical and relational. The focus of rhetorical communication is primarily on the study of influence. The art of rhetorical communication is based on the idea of persuasion. The relational approach, on the other hand, will examine communication from a transnational perspective, wherein two or more people coexist to reach an agreed upon perspective. Now, classification of human communication can be found in the workplace, especially when we have group work. Now, we see that co-workers tend to argue or tend to assert themselves in order to make their ideas or to make their viewpoints accepted. At the same time, we see that they also need to nurture their relationship in order to maintain their collaboration. So therefore, a perfect balance between asserting oneself and also accepting the ideas from the other person is very important. And this is a strategy or a tactic that is called as saving face, wherein you are able to balance both asserting oneself and also accepting solutions and ideas by being passive. Coming to the next characteristic, communication is a process. We see that communications is fundamental to the existence and survival of humans. And at the same time, it is also important for the organization itself, for an organization to function there needs to be proper interaction between the various individuals in that organization. And therefore, communication depends on the way we interact with one another, the way we talk, the way we express our ideas and opinions tells a lot about communication as a process. But we need to realize that communication is not something that is rooted in the present. For example, the way in which a person interacts with another person. Let's take an example of two individuals, person A and person B. The way A interacts with B will not only depend on the present situation. If A has had a bad experience with B, then all those experiences of the past will influence the current way of proceeding, will have an impact on the current way of going about. And in this way, we see that how a person interacts in the present moment is indirectly or directly related to some past experience. And as a result of this, we say that communication does not occur in isolation. It is a process and it occurs due to certain aspects that have been dealt with in the past. At the same time, we see that communication is not a series of incidents. Now, for example, if you take a look at a friend's compliment about your appearance, now, an interpretation of those words will depend on a long series of experiences going way back in time. At the same time, you also have to see that Communication with others is not a series of events. It is not a series of incidents pasted together like photographs in a scrapbook. Other, other than that, it is something more like a motion picture in which the meaning comes from unfolding or an interrelated series of images. And here we see that a lot of things come together in order to make a process of communication successful. Now, we also see that communication refers to the process of creating and sharing ideas, information, views, facts, feelings among the people in order to reach a common understanding. And therefore, it is said that communication is the key to directing 
function of management. Let us have a perfect example here. A manager may be highly qualified and skilled, but if he does not possess good communication skills, all his ability becomes irrelevant. A manager must communicate his directions effectively to his subordinates in order to get the work done properly from them. And finally, we come to the third point, communication is symbolic. Here we see that symbolic communication is the exchange of messages that change a priority expectation of events. Now, examples of this are modern communication technology and the exchange of information amongst animals. So we see that symbolic communication takes place in animals as well as in humans. We have already had so many examples of how animals communicate symbolically with one another. At the same time, humans also communicate a lot through body language and through non-verbal communication. And by referring to the objects and ideas not present at the time of communication, we see that a world of possibility is opened. Now, in animal societies, symbolic communication helps one to understand the conduct of members of a cooperating group. For example, the behavior of a weaver and worker can be carefully studied, and it is found that this particular worker ant will communicate differently to the members of its own colony, and it will communicate differently with intruders. Similarly, we see that animals have their own way of communicating, but it is said humans are the only species who use a symbolic language. And we see that among human beings, various symbols convey a wide range of things. For example, an example of symbolic communication in humans would be wearing of uniforms. If we see a person with a white coat and a stethoscope, we definitely know for sure that he is a doctor because that is something that has been associated with that kind of a uniform. At the same time, we see military uniforms have badges and insignias which indicate rank and honors. At the same time, it also indicates their branch of operation. And as a result, we can say that humans are the only species who use symbolic language to communicate various meanings and various nuances of elements that they want to communicate. At the same time, we also need to be aware of certain non-verbal behaviors that can have symbolic meaning. Now, this also depends very much on the culture. For example, something which means, which has a meaning in the Indian culture may have a completely different meaning in the Western culture. And as a result of it, when we are studying non-verbal behavior, we need to take into account the cultural aspect as well. A perfect example of this would be the nodding of the head, which can indicate yes as well as no. Now, at the same time, we see that all this deals with communication and its characteristics. So we have looked at the characteristics as well. In the next session, we will be dealing with the four ways of communication.